Greetings. In this first episode of RGSL podcast, our guest is Professor Ineta Ziemela, who has just started her position as a judge in the Court of Justice of the European Union. Beforehand, she was the president of the Constitutional Court of Latvia. She has had very close ties with RGSL since 2001 within the Soderberg program. In this very first episode of our podcast, we talk with Ineta Ziemela about what is state, about her childhood and educational background. And she talked with us about the rule of law and why she thinks that Latvia has a potential to grow. So today with us uh, are uh, Christopher from the second year, Marta from the third year, and we are honored to welcome here the president of the Constitutional Court of Latvia, Republic of Latvia, to be more precise, um, Ineta Ziemela. Hello, everyone. All right, so without further ado, uh, let's see what we have to know. Uh, <laughs> well, you have to know everything, but we will never be able to know everything. Yes, so. unf- unfortunately. <laughs> we will just touch a little bit, you know, top of an iceberg. Um, so, when preparing this conversation, of course, we did research on uh, your education uh, and experience, how your life has taken its direction. We believe that moments which define the course of action largely take place during childhood and you know, youth years, of course. What was it in you, this driving force or division, that made you visualize and understand that you are going to become a lawyer, the one who helps people? <laughs> well, uh, that, that's of course very difficult because my childhood uh, took place uh, uh, in the Soviet Union in the occupied uh, territory of uh, Latvia and uh, of course um, it was uh, very strange times and I lived in a uh, far away countryside away from uh, the information at least available in the capital Riga but the countryside was very different uh, at that time and so it's very very difficult to say what triggered the word lawyer in my mind but one day I knew I was going to be a lawyer and it was very early in my uh, young years I was uh, probably about 12 I think when I knew I liked the idea of being a lawyer um, and it was two, twofold actually, I remember. I mean, one, I was truly fascinated by the world and I was true, even with limited amount of information and totally uh, sort of uh, based in Soviet propaganda. But when the Soviet leaders were traveling places and meeting the leaders of the friendly states at that time, you know, within uh, their sphere of influence, I thought, oh, that's fascinating, Cuba. That's totally fascinating. I mean, the, all of the sort of the Asian and African countries, and I was fascinated by whatever international um, you know I could get at that time. So uh, it totally sort of dreams of impossible dreams of that time. So international law. And that was, that the was, first that was one. international, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, uh, a sort of lawyer who, um, who uh, indeed, my understanding was, a oh, lawyer can put things right. You know, a lawyer can sort of organize um, within a within the group of people. You know, some 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 order in in all of this. Um, so there you are. That's it's a, it's a definition of a of a lawyer for me. <laughs> Did constitutional law grow on you later, or was it also? So, no, 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 absolutely not. At that time, uh, I mean, in Soviet times, uh, and at that early stage, uh, I had no clue that there was civil or criminal or constitutional. That was not uh, the, the the depths of uh, of the detail for uh, for uh, the child's uh, reflections. No, that came already later when I was uh, when I started uh, studying at the University of Latvia, and that was uh, you see it was nineteen eighty eight. So as as soon as I came to Riga, the whole uh, true information and history, you know, just collapsed on me. So I had a short. Uh, I had a, a intense introduction into proper Latvian history uh, when I when I came to to Riga from uh, from the middle of nowhere at that time, and uh, and that's when all of the other areas uh, of law came about. But the interest in state and the state law and how state uh, 
actually is regulated at an international level. That came along with independence. And with the big question, you know, what is Latvia? What is uh, its international position, you know? How do you define, uh, well, what I have lived through in my childhood? Uh, it turned out it was uh, an interesting period. Uh, it turned out that there were many sort of legal uh, questions that had to be answered. Many to, illusions. Uh, well, uh, all sorts of things, compli mm -hmm. complicated, painful. And uh, I think that all of that prompted me to be uh, in particular interested in, in public law public law uh, and international law in particular because we didn't have many international lawyers at that time of course uh, because international law you know the Soviets would not really trust the Baltics uh, to do international relations and international law you had to be very very trustworthy yeah. to be able to do that um, so there were many many factors it was absolutely crazy time you know 89 90 91 and early 90s it was totally um totally crazy difficult to to picture from today's perspective and uh, but what is clear uh, despite all of the uncertainties and plenty of questions and plenty of opportunities at that time um, i pursued uh, my studies because i wanted to really get through to the crux of the matter uh, whether uh, latvia and the other two states uh, were uh, injured states uh, you know uh, in terms of international law and uh, and what that meant for their legal status and rights and so that's what drew me into yeah. just through all of the universities that uh, that I had gone through. So it's really in the interest in, in a way, in improving, in conceptualizing, you know, the Republic of Latvia. That is, I think, a very fundamental incentive to pursue such. Uh, well, for me, it was. Yeah. I mean, I imagine we each one of us is 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 uh, different, but. Uh, but I, I really, I'm now, uh, with the benefit of insight, uh, with lots of experience, you know, I look back at that and I'm just thinking, am I not fortunate that I really got interested in this, in this issue? I mean, I don't know what sent upon me this interest in how the idea of Latvia, independent Latvia, came about in 1917, thereabouts, you know. And, and, and why, why is it that, the, you know, we were interrupted for 50 years and, and how do you legally look at it? And I am just so fortunate that that, that fascinated me. Yeah. Yeah, and actually the answer to our second question with this uh, broad answer and it was very nice to listen. And uh, actually we kind of um, later on when we were looking for what to ask you, we wanted to know whether during this whole way of um, finding your purpose and knowing that you're going to be a lawyer in such a young age, how your parents' relatives saw, saw your um, willingness to do that. They didn't know. They didn't know? No, I never told anybody. It was I a just, secret. No, it wasn't secret. Well, maybe, I don't know, but I didn't, uh, I didn't look at it as a secret. Um, I mean, I, the, the, uh, the reason probably I didn't tell anybody was that uh, it's, you know, it's really a village. It's in the middle of nowhere. I did not have any lawyer that I could knew, know about. And, uh, uh, but th at the same time, I was, uh, uh, well, one of the probably strongest pupils uh, of my time at the school. And uh, there were many teachers who wished that I was their successor in whichever subject matter. And I thought, well, I would not really want to upset anybody, so <laughs> because I don't like upsetting people, I like making people happy. <laughs> so I just kept it to myself as a kind of a dream, not quite sure what to do with this dream. Um, and uh, and yeah, until I, I sort of tried to 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 get uh, well, I, I was trying to, to doing my best uh, studying uh, um, at school um, and being uh, the best possible in the school. Uh -huh. And then I went to the um, to to the admissions to the university. Okay, well, like. Then we were thinking of uh, the uh, other aspect, maybe the parents in this case would be the ones that had an impact on you, but then maybe you can answer, maybe you had any other role models that... Or support people. Yeah. 
No. No. So entirely an individual decision. Absolutely. That's why I'm telling but on the question which is very often asked mm -hmm. in the interviews. Mm -hmm. So how I don't know, just came, came about. about. Yeah. Okay. All right. So okay then let's But it's true, I was very active. I was an active pupil at school and I liked to I liked to um, you know, to, to, to do things that are interesting, that are sort of constructive. Uh to that, think. That makes sense. Well, I always generated ideas. I mean, yeah. just <laughs> one other thing. But you know, it was even in the in the Soviet times. But then there was advantage of being in the middle of nowhere. So you there, you could instead of doing uh, I don't know a theater on uh, whichever Brezhnev's uh, piece, you know, instead you could think and offer the teachers. Uh, but why don't we do the uh, the uh, evening of experiments of uh, uh, of chemistry and and you could get through, you know, with with that type of idea. Mm -hmm. But no, I liked. I I like to organize people. I like to organize my my class <laughs> and uh, and 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 do things uh, sort of interesting things and 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 conceptually or in terms of content interesting things, although not so interesting things. You know, it's uh, all sorts of things uh, yeah. come up. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just. I have a, a question about your further education, right? You have had a, uh, a law, I would say, a lot of educa education abroad, right? And uh, so, as you have gained this education in Sweden, in the United Kingdom, in Denmark, what are the main differences have you noticed in their educational systems, uh, knowing that you ha were a good pupil, right? And perhaps something that you would like to take home from it. No, they are very different. Uh, I mean, you uh, evidently you cannot uh, compare uh, Oxbridge with uh, with the rest of the continental uh, European uh, sort of uh, education. Um, it's based on uh, on on very tete -a -tete type uh, uh, approach. You know, tutorials are an essential part in in Cambridge and Oxford, and it's a very very long like really long established uh, tradition in those uh, top uh, UK universities so I probably would not compare that with the continental European where you have uh, more sort of uh, um, yeah, you, you, you have an, another tradition. No, yeah. it's it's big, big sort of big auditoriums yeah. with a lot of people and the professor standing, uh, you know, at the bottom of the of the room and 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 teaching. You know, you have this this difference between probably Anglo-Saxon model and yeah. and continental European. Um, to me, and I was trying to when I started uh, when I got the professorship uh, in Sweden, I. I brought over actually the Anglo-Saxon approach to my classroom because I sought uh, interaction with the students and letting them ask questions and think is uh, is a very uh, strong aspect of the Anglo-Saxon model um, and, and I still believe in that and that's how I teach at the RGSL. So, um, I'm not very fond of this uh, classical uh, European model of, of big rooms full of uh, mm -hmm. students and uh, very minimal interaction. But it's still the case because there are many, you know, you have universities which are understaffed and underfinanced and, and then there are lots of students, of course, who would like to uh, just even just to listen to that uh, lecture without the possibility to interact with the, with the professor more directly so it's it's always difficult to have this balance so you mentioned rgsl was it a planned action or something unexpected that you involved in this community uh, well you know um it was uh, early days of the rgsl rgsl is founded in 1998 mm -hmm. and at that moment uh, it was funded by the swedish government okay and so the way the, the Swedish government did it was many different uh, methods put together, but in terms of international law and human rights, uh, uh, there was a Soderberg Foundation uh, in Sweden that wished to recruit and fund the professor, which they would call it's a Soderberg chair mm -hmm. at the RGSL. And so there was uh, an announcement uh, that they are uh, seeking for a professor 
for this place. I was working uh, in Strasbourg at that time in France in the Council of Europe, having defended my PhD, etc. And uh, and I, you know, knew of that uh, announcement, and and then I applied, and there were several applications uh, from all over Sweden and probably outside, and there was a committee, international committee, selecting. Um, the best possible. There was a, a German professor, um, a uh, Norwegian professor, and uh, there was uh, the, the you know member of the faculty in Lund, uh, Croatian of, of Croatian origin uh, mm -hmm. professor, and so those three were reading through all of the candidates' motivation letters, publications, etc. And um, they selected me, and then they invited me uh, to become a Soderberg professor. First. No, in RGSL. Uh, uh, RGSL, but also working with the view that I should be working uh, in Lund as well. You know, it was half half mm. at that time. Um, so, and then I was commuti commuting back and forth. A lot of traveling. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But now you are working uh, uh, in Latvia as a president of Constitutional Court, and. Um, how has been this time for you? Um, what has been the most challenging part or maybe something you did not expect at the very beginning when you started working in this position? Um, when, I, when I returned to, to Latvia uh, 100 percent mm -hmm. <laughs> five years ago, um, I, uh, no, I, 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 there, there was really, there isn't, well, let's, let's put it that way. Um, I knew I was going to work like mad. That, that I knew. I, I, I had set my mind. I'm coming back. There is a lot of things that need to be done. And I clearly could uh, define them. And I could also sort of see the way to move forward. So I was quite ready to invest uh, a lot of my, uh, my energy into what needed to be done uh, in Latvia in order to um, bring to the next level the constitutional court you know the next level of its function and uh, and to more generally have an impact on on the rule of law in latvia so that, that, that i was prepared um what i was not prepared uh, to was um, you know the people that i actually met uh, because uh, it has been uh, really a pleasure to, to work with the other six uh, judges uh, of the court. And I must say I'm very fortunate, uh, yet again, <laughs> I'm very fortunate that um, I happen to work with these, you know, uh, we are seven together, but in this particular moment yeah. in time at the Constitutional Court, because it turned out that uh, we understand each other. Uh, we understand each other and we can stimulate each other and the discussions that we have if i lift the veil of the secrecy of the liberations right now <laughs> but not the facts of it but the, the feeling of it i must say the the the, the quality of the deliber deliberations that uh, i've had over these five years um uh, in this court is absolutely comparable to what i had in the european court of human rights um and uh, even more so, actually, for various reasons, it's been uh, particularly inspiring here. So, um, again, for, for historical reasons, you know, because the, the, the problems we have are, are of, sort of, in a way, you can see that it, it, it has an impact. The way you decide the case will have an impact immediately. Uh, it's very mm -hmm. rewarding. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I've, uh, I knew there was going to be a lot of work. So that was not a surprise. I have really, <laughs> I thought I have worked already so much, but I can tell you it's possible even more. Yeah. Uh, but but the, um, the, 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 the satisfaction and, and the inspiration that I've got, that I did not expect, and I've got that. That's really nice. Uh, I have a follow-up question. So like, given the principle of judge impartiality and knowing that you have a lot of great teammates, right, in the constitutional court, do you think justice is separated from the person, their experiences, personality, and even values? Yeah, um, it's a, it's a, you know, this is the question that that uh, always, and I think there are books written about, yeah. uh, you know, who who the judge is, so to say. Um, 
I mean, of course, you can't separate uh, our life experiences, uh, what each one of us, you know, has experienced and has gone through. I mean, uh, the personality of a judge is is, is basically uh, made of all that experience, experience. and all that uh, education. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But you see, there is a balancing, a major balancing element in judging itself, and that is the principle of collegiality. There is no way that one judge will have, uh, you know, will be such that will over somehow overrule or over influence uh, the other, for example, six. And the bigger the body is, and the the higher you go in the judiciary, the 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 bigger the composition is exactly. And so it is this collegiality that really balances out uh, anyone's. Sort of particular particular personality, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. and that is very very important. I completely agree. <laughs> the next question is a bit related to to what you told us uh, previously, um, when you came back to Latvia, and um, decided that you're going to stay here. Um, what was the main driving force along the way this, that has made you grow, not stopping, uh, having this motivation to work even more, to find ways how to make things for the better? Uh, what, what, what was this in, inside of you? I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Um, I mean, if you look at, uh, at Latvia, let's say, from a, from a global perspective, you know, how, how we look. Um, I find that uh, Latvia is absolutely fascinating uh, state, um, and um, I mean, for many, many, for many reasons, uh, like I find everything is just about right. <laughs> um, it is two million people population. It has uh, uh, a history that uh, you know. <laughs> It's quite quite a special history that that has the uh, both uh, the capacity of making people particularly strong, and also the capacity of making the state very vulnerable. So that already uh, is sort of interesting. Um, it has uh, an incredible tradition of having uh, very gifted uh, people. Um, you know, percentage-wise, if yeah. you if you compare how many uh, talented, gifted people there are in terms against the size of the population, then the percentage is, is really high. Not to mention the the nature. We don't have you know volcanoes and mm. earthquakes and Governments, and, yes. and the horrible <laughs> animals or insects. <laughs> anyway, uh, the fact remains that it is it is the people, uh, the people of Latvia who have probably in impossible circumstances have managed to have their state have managed to have it yet again mm -hmm. so uh, that makes me uh, that really makes me to believe uh, in uh, in Latvians first as, as a nation which is in the core of a people uh, of Latvia so I believe in in, in in Latvians and I believe in in, in this uh, state and also I see that uh, it is actually not so difficult to make it really work. You know, it doesn't, if you sort of really think about it, which I have done, uh, it's quite possible to make it, uh, you know, be one of the leading sort of nations in, in Europe. And so that's what I would like to do still, you know, I, I, I realize that um, after all the, the, the first 30 years uh, after the restoration of independence for all of the uh, evident reasons have been complicated, but we have achieved quite a lot despite all these difficulties. And uh, I would think that, uh, you know, we could do such in shorter period of time, we could achieve really quite a bit. And on top of everything, you know, since we have one vote internationally, that's of course that's international lawyer speaking. <coughs> we have one vote. So imagine, uh, I mean, here we can generate uh, any number of ideas, and with that one vote, 
we can go to you know general assembly to uh, other sort of intergovernmental meetings and we can offer these ideas either now sort of the, the three main driving forces for human new human behavior are sciences um, uh, technology uh, and, and, and climate of course and, and the resources on the planet I mean in all these areas we have the capacity uh, and the ability to offer the solutions the ideas that could be of interest to to the others you know and I find it so fascinating that you have a possibility isn't it the problem that many of the talent that Latvia generates is really you know somehow uh, stolen because of these people wanting to migrate to other countries and affiliate with them right so we have we are as this kind of a, a mine for for talented people for sometimes well um, that's a that's a complicated uh, complicated issue um, yeah I mean, on the one hand, maybe one should really uh, reflect on uh, whether within the education system in Latvia and with whether within the information space mm -hmm. there is enough of debate of such a perspective that would sort of make the young people think, well, I have lots of opportunities, much more opportunities here than anywhere else. And even if the salary level is not yet that of Luxembourg, mm -hmm. I can actually influence that. You know, I can influence and we can be there. Maybe there isn't enough discussion of the sort Indeed. in Latvia. That's what I have been thinking. So uh, it really depends on uh, if there isn't enough common discussion on that then for the time being it really lies on the shoulders of each one person to be able to see that, to see that potential in your own country and to see you within that potential and say, hey, but I can do it, I have a dream and I can do it, you know. Because I think, I believe everything is possible here actually, you know, with imagination and energy and, and then just communication and lots of things are possible. Um, you can influence the processes, and you should, I believe. Um, yeah, and I, it's a pity when not everyone sort of is able to have this reflection, which would, would sort of bring you to realize, well, yeah, I have it's educated. Good. Yeah, I have been, you know, I've learned many things abroad, and now I'm ready to come back, you know. So, and I, I don't need those, you know, 10,000 uh, uh, a month, I'm very happy with, you know, 3,000, 4,000, but with lots of opportunities and, uh, you know, being uh, on top of things and, and influencing the processes. But it really, you know, uh, of course I accept that there are people who would just like to have, uh, I don't know, whatever you, whenever, wherever you are, earn 10,000 euros a month and are happy with that and don't want to really have influence on broader processes, of course we are, yeah. we're all sort of uh, unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing, what like Chris first mentioned, you know, we have these issues that in other countries the economy is better, the salaries there are higher, and Latvians always talk about that there's corruption, I mean, in almost every country there's some level of that, and populism, welfare, okay, okay these are the issues we are having here, but uh, at the same time you mentioned that, you know, we can make this world, we can make Latvia a better place. Much more easily than, for example, Germany or France. Yes. Yeah. Or France, which I know very well. <laughs> yeah, and how how do you see, what is your vision of Latvia in the next 20, 30 years from now? Um, now that I have not really thought about what my vision of next 20, 30 years is. Um, but what I know is really necessary, uh, what we really, really need to do is uh, to reform fundamentally the education system mm -hmm. as it is being done at the moment well I hope I hope so I, I um, it's the, I, I get very different comments you know uh, on, on what, what, what is going on but 
But the key to making uh, Latvia um, a self-respecting uh, state with the, with, uh, with the appropriate standing internationally is if we uh, broaden uh, good education, which includes, uh, by the way, education in the field of uh, civic uh, responsibilities and rule of law, to more and more, more kids, not just a few either elite schools or just historically good schools, but, uh, but there is really a need to, uh, to capture every child that we have. And the funny thing is, we're not that many, that's why it's possible. And I think the key to me, uh, the key uh, uh, ministry uh, for the future of Latvia is Ministry of Education. Education. And I'm not sure how, uh, uh, you know, do they see themselves as the key to the future of Latvia? I don't know. And if they do, you know, uh, how in terms of content, how they conceptualize that? Yeah, the, so this also, I think, uh echoes of what you said before that talent is what Latvia can offer to the international sphere and could completely agree to this as well um, if you uh, something a bit more different now um, I see that uh, you have very bright ideas you have a very bright past and you have a very bright future in my in, in my opinion so many people have similar to you to you at some point uh, in their life uh, wrote uh, an autobiography right uh, <laughs> for example dreams from my father becoming long walk to freedom the story with my experience uh, with truth a movable feast so how might you call your autobiography if you had one Ooh. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> there are many things <laughs> that should just stay with the history <laughs> where they are. <laughs> no, no that's, uh, that would be really complicated, I must say, to write. You know, there are. Um, it's just such a life full of so many things, mm -hmm. <laughs> so many events. I, I would not be able to. I would not be able to to uh, put put them in in writing. But if if it if there was a title to such a impossible kind <laughs> of a writing, that's what, an, what that's would it an, be? That's an impossible writing. Yeah. Um, what could it be? It is um, maybe the search of freedom. The search of freedom. So, so would you say that this uh, in the search of freedom uh, was patriotism or some kind of a duty a very very uh, strong part of it that you wanted to search for this freedom? No, to me the search of uh, freedom, you know, first it it, it comes from within. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, uh, uh, the center really uh, is uh, is the is a human being. You know, um, uh, each one of us um, is the center um, of you know life, and uh, and once uh, the 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 more sort of free you are internally, the more you sort of uh, respect yourself, and the more you can appreciate the freedom of the other person yeah. and then the more you can uh, actually appreciate the freedom of a society the free society and then a uh, free state you see so to me uh, the starting point is you know each one of us and uh, why why do i say the search of freedom because coming out of the uh, of the of the occupied um, uh, society from 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 a society which was uh, really oppressed and that's very difficult for you to to even realize you know how damaged the people are when uh, when they are living in, a, in under oppression but the people are damaged and at some point for example I realized that well wait, wait a minute wait a minute you know who who am I you know uh, in all of this but there are many people who have not asked that question and um, and my parents and grandparents, <laughs> you know, have not asked that question, and so this is why the, at the moment I realize I have to first of all uh, make a major internal inventory. What did I believe in at that time? What do I believe now? And how the transition has taken place? And what do I believe in today in in our modern Latvia? And what do I believe uh, in terms of you know the world and and where should the world go? The planet should go. 
it's a lot of your own, you know, you work with yourself, mm -hmm. you, you make a major inventory, uh, you clean the house uh, within yourself, so to say. And only then you have uh, any right, if at all, to organize to, the world. To you know, to really offer something yeah. to the other person and say, listen, maybe we do it this way, and maybe to, to the the bigger sort of uh, or, or or more numerous people. I see that it's a problem for many that they search for this kind of a meaning of their lives in these kind of. Uh, offices or some kind of power and yeah, that's wrong. and this is I think that's where this corruption wrong. comes that's, really. that's really wrong yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely maybe you have any questions to us or maybe you want to say something to our listeners that you haven't mentioned already <laughs> I think I probably have uh, mentioned uh, most important uh, most uh, the keywords are there you see the keywords are are, are there uh, Free, uh, a free uh, human being, you know, um, it's a free human being who addresses the other human being with respect and uh, tolerates different opinions. So that's the crux of the free society, I should say. And the free society has really merited uh, a good state for itself because for the moment the society still organize themselves through this uh, state-centered uh, uh, world, yeah. world vision yeah even if we have European Union that could be another podcast <laughs> <laughs> how, how that all, all goes together so no I think uh, I, I think at the center I would really put um, uh, this this um, free person you know free person who who believes in himself and his people and his state. So the key words are there. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. I think this was a very Pleasure. meaningful conversation with you. Always. Okay. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps uh, see you in another episode. <laughs> in my next life, yeah. yeah. In Luxembourg, you're very yes, welcome indeed. to come and visit, yeah. Yeah, we were very pleased to welcome you here as our first guest. So thank you. Pleasure. Okay, good luck to your uh, the, the following interview. This will be very, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. Yeah. Thank you.